much. Good afternoon. I'm sorry that I will be the one to take you to the underground now. So another um, geomorphological feature a little bit hidden from our eyes so from the surface. So I will be presenting Scotian caves in the classical karst and I will explain the, the term classical karst shortly. Um, so all the credits for this successful application of, uh, of our geosites goes to my co-authors, uh, Nadia Zupanheina and Andrei Michels from the Karst Research Institute in Slovenia. Yes, we have a special institute in Slovenia devoted to Karst research, and Borut Peritz from the um, Scotian Caves Park. And Nadia Zupanheina, let me tell you, she was just recently appointed uh, president of the International Union of Speleo Spe Speleology. Um, so, just to take you where, where we are. Um, so this is the small piece of land called Slovenia. And in the um, southwestern part, we have a region that is called Kras. And the, the region expands also to the, to, to, to the east, to the southeast, to, to Italy, uh, where they call it Carso, uh, but the, the, the German word for, for this region is, is Karst. So there is where the, the term Karst um, originates. So it originates uh, in, the, in our area of, of indigenous Kras. So th that's why we call it the classical Karst, uh, this part in Slovenia. So, and the, the Scotian caves are in, the, in this rim of the classical Karst. <clears throat> to, to the geological content. So the, the, the main structure is basically a, um, quite a relatively large anticline with an axis trending northwest southeast and it's composed mainly of the well bedded, thick bedded, um, uh, lower Cretaceous to upper Cretaceous um, sh uh, shallow marine limestone and upwards, they, they go to the, um, the yeah, the, this, especially the, the upper Cretaceous limestone, they are full of rudists also, like you have it here in, in Zumaya. Um, so, and, and they, they trend up, upwards into the, the Paleocene and Eocene uh, for a miniferal limestone still. Um, so this is the, the core of the, the, the anticline, and the, the whole anticline is actually surrounded, and the, the anticline calls an elevated surface that we call a Kars Plateau. So the, the, the Kars Plateau is, is surrounded by the, by the impermeable fleece rocks. So the, the main um, interest in, um, in Kars development is actually in this contact with, with impermeable fleece to, to the permeable um, limestones. So in, if we look to, in, into the details to, to, to this part, um, we, have, uh, we, we can see even in the geological map um, the, the river Reka um, that runs from the impermeable fleece rocks and almost immediately it touches limestone, it sinks underground in an area that are called Scotian Caves, which I'll be presenting now. <clears throat> So the best image I, I, I got for, for the, the, like a sketch image of the, um, the, uh, the, the river Reka actually forming the, uh, the Scotian Caves it was one of the interpretative uh, panels in the, in the Scotian Caves part, which shows you the, the river Reka um, uh, runs from the impermeable fleece rocks, runs, um, sinks into the, the Scotian Caves. So these are the Scotian Caves. Um, but Scotian caves are mainly like six kilometers long, but the river Reka extends its, its flow underground, all the way underground, and, and actually um, flows out in Italy with the name of Timavo, very close to Trieste. Um, so the whole part of the, of the river Reka, of Timavo system, is um, mainly underground. So this is one of the, the, the sketches that you would find in the textbook of the, uh, uh, the, the karstic um, surface, so surface and underground geomorphological features, and you will be, um, easy, uh, it will be easy for you to recognize actually the, 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 this model originates by Nadia Zupanheina, it uh, <laughs> originates in the Scotian Caves um, system. So all these features we have developed in this small area with, um, with typical these ponors, like we, we call it um, 
uh, the, 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 the uh, sinking of the, of the river. So we have the, the solution dough lines and the collapse dough lines. We have the, the underground cave system very well developed here. <clears throat> so b before I take you uh, with, with some photos to the, to, to the Škotsian caves that you will see, um, how they are developed. J just um, remind you, I want to remind you that, that um, th this is the part that I'm showing to, to tourists, that this is the touristic part of the cave where you can actually walk, this is a touristic way, but it's, um, it, it is actually on, um, not, not even a half of the, uh, of, of the Škotsian cave's uh, whole system because the system, as I told you, is um, more or less six kilometers long and um, so, some of the nicest fish, are, unfortunately, are still um, hidden for uh, touristic visits. There are now um, efforts to open more of, the, uh, of, of this part of the caves to see also the, the one of the largest chambers, um, underground chambers in the, um, yeah, in the world, or at least in Europe. Uh, so. Yeah, and the, 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 the system of the, of the channels, of the passages, is very much related to, to the bedding of the, of, of the limestones and also tectonic features, uh, and, and this can be very nicely seen in the cave. So it, it has a geological importance to explain how the, the cave develops, really. Um, so ju ju just a few um, numbers also, although I think dimensions are not so much scientifically important, M but when you enter the Martel chamber, uh, so this is what is unfortunately still hidden, um, you will be wow. So it's, it's really amazing. It takes your breath um, how, how big this chamber really is. You, you, you can see it's 2.2 uh, million uh, cubic meters of, of volume and it's one of the largest underground chambers in Europe. But um, th th this uh, um, table is actually more to, to show you the diversity of the geomorphological features that are exposed here. So you can see underground canyon of the river Reka, you can see uh, these this very large chambers, you can see rimstone pools, natural bridges, like natural windows, uh, waterfalls and rapids, and collapsed the lines also. So. <clears throat> So this is how it all starts. So I, I told you from the from the flish rocks, the, the river Reka flows into the um, into the Scotian caves with a very nice large ponor, how how the, the sinkhole also is called. Um, so we are just here now in the in, in my sketch and with the with the next photo. Um, I show you this, where you can actually see the, the, <laughs> the, the river that um, runs underground, but you can see it uh, from the top of these large collapse dough lines. So uh, we, we call it the, the little or the small collapse dough line, and this one is the, the, the big one. And in pioneering karstic research, this um, dough line, uh, the, the term dough line, which, which originates from, um, from the, um, uh, how the local people call these two um, collapses of the of the Scotian caves. Um, they, they were referring to to, to these two um, uh, dough lines. So the term um, collapse dough line again originates um, here in this part of the work. Um, <clears throat> so now we enter the main part of the of the of the Scotian caves, the, the underground part, the nicest part, with the with the um, with the river Reka, which is of tor torrential uh, character. So um, in times of the of the floods or hard uh, hard rain, heavy rain, um, sometimes the the river rises almost to, to this bridge. So like um, 45 meters um, high, um, the, the the river rises in this. Uh, occasion. So we are now here in this murmuring cave, how they call it. We have also very nicely developed speller teams there, not only stalagmites and stalactite, also the uh, rimstone pools. And this is one of the bridges that you pass when you go touristically to, this, to, to these caves. It's 47 meters above the, the bottom of the, the valley. Okay, to, to the scientific <clears throat> tradition, I must say that, that uh, this site is almost as much as, or well, it can be as much valuable in the, in the historically as it is for the, the, its geomorphological features, because um, in the 19th century, these geosites in the heart of the classical karst, so the whole area, 
actually contributed to the emergence and the development of karstology, speleology, and speleobiology as scientific disciplines. So um, this is one of the, the first very detailed plan of the of the Scotian caves. It's also in the profile and also in the, um, um, in the uh, aerial view. And you can see that um, the, the, the first passes here were, um, th th this is from the 18th, 19th, um, the, the first passes are, are now already uh, covered thickly by, by, uh, by stellar teams. So you can see the, the fences and this um, covered already. And it, it, it was due to the distinctive uh, relief forms, local terms for karst phenomena, and karst, um, um, the, the, the word karst itself, entered the international uh, scientific terminology here. These are two examples. One is of um, the, no, one of the textbook, and one is from Larousse Dictionary in France. So you can see all these circle um, terms are, are uh, from, from Slovenian language introduced to the international terminology like polyadoline, ponor already I told you, uvala also. Um, so the main arguments for the IOGS recognition at the Scotian case, there are numerous remarkable speleological, hydro, uh, hydrological, and morphological karst features are unique um, in their appearance in, and in their size. They are one of the most spectacular examples of contact karst formed by a torrential sinking river at the context of impermeable flesh and permeable limestones. And for the textbook examples of sinkhole, natural bridges, gorges, potholes, collapse, dolines, abysses and underground canyons, springs and passages covered with flowstone deposits give this small area of the world significance in the study of karst features and processes. Due to their geological and aesthetic importance, they have already been recognized in several lists or by several different um, um, disciplines like UNESCO, it is on the UNESCO World Heritage list already since 1986 and in 1999 it, it has entered also the Ramsar list um, the, as the first underground wetland. And of course for this uh, peculiar um, geomorphological type that is underground, very, 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 uh, uh, very complex um, environment, um, it is also the, the important natural habit, uh, habitat for comprising highly specialized and often endemic cave animals. And one of those that we are quite proud of is, uh, proud of is this European cave salamander or an olum, what is also called, um, uh, called in German language. We call it a human fish because of the pale skin. And it's, uh, it's really like a symbol also of a Slovenian um, karst. And with this, I would like to thank you. Hvala lepa for your listening.